Welcome or welcome back to the Company of the Cat. Today's video is one that I love to see opinions about in the comment section because it concerns a subject that I don't see a lot of conversation around it. When the hell did House Valarion migrate to Westeros? And also, why? And the same question goes about the Andals too. This is what I will try to answer in this video with whatever information we get from the novels and House of the Dragon. First, I want to talk about the timeline we know. Valyria started its rise 5,000 years ago after the Long Night, since George Martin said that the Long Night was closer to 5,000 years ago and not 8, as in universe historians suggest. In an interview, he said, So I think it's closer to 5,000 years. But you're right, Westeros is a very different place. There is no King's Landing, there is no Iron Throne, there are no Targaryens. Valyria has hardly begun to rise yet with its dragons and the great empire that it built. When Valyria started its rise, the Giscari were already well established, and there is also some written stuff that suggests that Olgis was on its start 8,000 years ago. So the timeline is very different from what we have in mind and from what the Maester suggests. An event that helps a lot to understand why and when the Valyrians left Valyria, and in general the timeline, is the Valyrian schism, in my opinion. So here's the timeline I made based on what we know, and later I will break it down. In universe sources suggest that the Long Night took place 6,000 years ago, and Martin said that it is closer to 5,000 years ago and not 10 or 8 like it is written in true history. So the Long Night happened 6,000 years ago with 5,000 years ago, and Valyria hardly began to rise 5,000 years ago after the Long Night. We have three dates for the Andal invasion, 2, 4, and 6,000 years ago, and I think all of them are correct, it was three big waves for different reasons, but today I will talk only about the last wave that happened 2,000 years ago. And lastly, the two events I will analyze in this episode are Carlon's Revolution and the Valyrian Schism that happened around 1322, years before the Doom of Valyria. These two events triggered the last wave of Andals and the flee of Valyrians from Valyria, I believe, but also the establishment of Norvos, Cohor, and Lorath as we know them today. Andals, pushing north from Andalos to the shores of Lorath Bay and across the bay in the longships, swept across the islands, slaughtered the hairy men of the islands in the name of their seven-faced god, and took their women and children as slaves. And I would suggest keeping that in mind because Andals had a problem with slavery and sacrifices my ass. But anyway, after some time, each island had its king, and the largest had four. Ever the quarrelsome people, the Andals spent the next thousand years warring one upon the other until Carlon the Great brought all the islands under his rule. He raised a great wooden keep at the center of Lorassian's vast hunted maze and decorated his hall with the heads of his slain foes, something very reminiscent of Clarence Crab and the stories we have about the Whispers. The reason I'm saying all this is because Andal did not have a problem with magic or slavery, and I will talk about it even more when I analyze the first wave of migration to Westeros. Carlon, like a bootleg Aegon Targaryen, had a dream to make himself king of all Andals, and within 20 years, he extended his rule from the lagoon where Bravos is today, all the way east to the Axe, and as far south as the headwaters of Aperoin and Noin. The south expansion, though, brought him into conflict not only with other Andals, but also with the city of Norvos. The Norvosi closed the river against him, so he left his hall in the mazes to lead the attack, defeating them in two battles. Carlon got cocky and marched against Norvos itself, so the Norvosi sent to Mami Valyria for help, and the Valyrians, who were in the summer of their power, sent a hundred dragons to Norvos. Carlon the Great burned with his army, and afterward the dragon lords flew to Lorath, where they burned Carlon's great keep, the towns, fishing villages along the shores, even the great mazes were blackened. It is said that not a man, woman, or child survived the scourging of Lorath, so hot did these fires burn. Thereafter, the Lorathi Isles remained uninhabited for some centuries, and the next inhabitants were people from Valyria, 1322 years before the doom. It was a sect of religious descendants and were worshippers of Boaz, the blind god. So the shit with Carlon got down approximately 2,000 years ago, and as a result, many Andals fled to Westeros because they didn't want to the fate of Lorath or to become slaves. This is why I believe indeed some Andals went to Westeros at that point, and it's not a false date. 
And that brings me to the reason why the Valyrians went to Lorath in the first place. The Valyrians had several different gods, but the dragon lords regarded all faith as equally false, and looked down on the clergy and temples as relics of more primitive times. But they promoted religious tolerance to keep their subjects divided and prevent them from unifying under the banner of one single god and revolt. 1322 years before the doom, the followers of Boaz were not the only ones who left. Like their sister city Lorath, the free cities of Norvos and Cohor, as we know them today, were originally founded by religious descendants from Valyria. We don't know exactly if all these people left at once, and when exactly, but from the information we get, around 2,000 years ago, people started to leave Valyria for religious reasons. And that would explain even more why Andal waves arrived in Westeros at that point. Not only the Carlon incident happened, but people were pushing and migrating in areas where Andals lived in Essos. In House of the Dragon, we saw that House Valarion has entirely different customs and religion, too, than the Targaryens. The dragon bond is not the only difference. It is also pointed out that as dragon lords, the Targaryens are not very devout at all, and they were not very respectful at Lena's funeral. At least, Daemon was not. The Valarians is an ancient Valyrian house that came to Westeros before the Targaryens and settled in the Gallet on the island of Driftmark. Their original seat is the castle of Driftmark, where the ancient high seat, the Driftwood throne, was. According to legend, the throne had been given to them by the Merlin king to conclude a pact. And you cannot imagine how many question marks I have about the story. They were not dragon riders, the sea weather elements, and during the conquest, it was their fleet that carried Aegon's soldiers to mainland Westeros, and later formed the more significant part of the royal fleet. Throughout the first century of Targaryen rule, so many lords of the tides served on the small council as masters of ship that the office was widely seen as almost hereditary. The thing is, unlike the Targaryens, they came to Westeros way earlier, and not because they knew about the do. Additionally, they didn't settle in a castle that was a Valyrian outpost, like Dragonstone, they built their own. And even before the dance, Driftmar was very old, gloomy, damp, and suffered from floods. This is why Corlys built High Tide. So we are talking about quite an old castle. So considering all this makes me believe that Velaryons and maybe even the Keldigars left the freehold at the same time the schism happened. Another Valyrian family we don't know a lot about is House Keldigar. We are told that like House Velaryon is an ancient house. This phrase, though, is very vague. But like the Velaryons, they are also very close to the sea, and maybe not as advanced in navigation as them. It was mentioned that, Valeria, that Velaryon ships, along with those of another allied Valyrian house, the Keldigars of Cloisle, dominated the middle reach of the narrow sea, whilst the Targaryens ruled the skies with their dragons. Additionally, they also have sea-related stuff in their arms, unlike the Targaryens and the now extinct House Coheris, which were heavily related to fire. Another thing we do get about the Keldigars is that they are quite rich and hefty, so it makes me believe that they were for sure very well established before the Targaryens came to Westeros. I mean, it is mentioned by both Davos and Stannis that in their castle you can find various treasures, a magical horn included, even if it is a rumor, it is stated that they are capable of having something that valuable. And Davos also described the seat as ancient, too. Now, both the seat of House Velaryon and Keldigar, along with their houses, have been described as ancient. Targaryens as house isn't. Their lineage and bloodline are described as being ancient, or from ancient Valyria, along with some customs and traditions, but their house is fairly new in Westeros. The castle also is described as ancient um, sometimes, not a lot, but it had been described like this. But the castle was also built way before the Targaryens took possession of it. It was built 300 years before the coming of the Targaryens, so I do believe the Keldigars came along with the Valarians during the schism. Something also weird is that unlike the Valarians, we don't get weddings at all with Keldigars, and we do not have appearance descriptions either. We only know that some members cannot change pillowcases because they don't have chins. So they either didn't have Valyrian traits from the start, or they lost them because of intermarriage in Westeros. Otherwise, we would have marriages if they did have classical Valyrian characteristics, I believe. 
in House of the Dragon, we get to see Lena's funeral. And the first thing I said while watching the episode was, oh my god, why do they say the same shit Aaron was saying? They have some identical phrases, like from the sea we came to the sea we shall return. So it makes me believe that the religion was very similar to what the early Ironborn believed in. Additionally, we see other similarities, like the Driftwood throne that was gifted to them by the Merlin King. Ironborn allegedly lost a throne too, that it is heavily speculated by the fandom that was Weirwood, like Naga's bone, and his crown that they called Driftwood crown. Many of the descriptions we get about Driftmark are very similar to the description of Harlow, an ancient Ironborn seat, that got replaced with a more elaborate seat similar to High Tide, both of them grand with beaten silver details. Keldigars also have a bit common link, the magical Kraken summoning horn. This type of horn has appeared twice in stories around Westeros, once where Rothgar of Pike and Ironborn of all had it, and once in the current timeline when Keldigars possessed this horn. That makes me believe that when still in Essos, maybe these people had an older common religion, and it would make sense because at Dawn Age, there was another big civilization there, the Fisher Queens, and as the name suggests, they were fishy. In conclusion, I believe both the Valerians and the Keldigars went to Westeros when the schism broke in Valyria. This is it for today's upload. I will make more videos about the timeline and more specifically about the Andals, because the timeline is more complicated than the Riemann hypothesis. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press a like, subscribe to the channel and tune in for the next one. Happy New Year and bye!